Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. I'm Eric C. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm back with the Music Man. And as you can see, I'm doing a little bit of work on the back of the body now. The front of the body is got one very thin coat of epoxy resin. And I'm using the Ultra Clear, or was it Ultra Clear, Ultra, Ultra, Ultra Clear, or something like that. What is it? What am I using here? Uh, yeah, Ultra Clear Epoxy. Yeah. Stuff works pretty good. Uh, I've been using it on a lot of different projects, including guitars, and it seems to be a lot better and a lot easier to work with uh, than the Menards brand that I was buying. That's Farm Wood or something like that. It's called. So what I got going on over here is I sanded back the clear coat. I have not gone through the uh, clear on this. And a good way to tell if I went through the clear, well, there's a couple of spots over here that are around the edges where the sandpaper didn't even hit. And uh, you see a little bit of bare wood. So what that feels like to me, though, is it, it looks like somebody hit it with a buffer and kind of went through it a little bit around this edge. I'll be fixing that. So you see some of these lines and little dots here on the back of this body. Well, this is pretty much just black paint. And it's the same black as what these paint pens are. I've been using these paint, paint pens for touch-ups and stuff, and they work out great. You can get them in a bunch of different colors. You can pick them up at Walmart or any arts and crafts store. And they have other colors as well, including pearls, uh, metallics, and whatnot. Now... What I've done here is I sanded back the clear coat, only the clear coat, and I didn't go through it because I would see, like, these are my fingerprints here, and this is where my hand was over here, but you would see black powder mixed in with the white powder. So this over here is clear coat. Nothing on here is black, so everything that's on the back of this, that's all clear coat as well. And I'm using uh, 1200 grit sandpaper, dry. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like giving this a good uh, light scuffing because I don't want to go through to clear too fast, but I do want to remove some of the lighter scratches and stuff that were in the finish. These black lines here that you see are deeper scratches. And what I'm going to end up doing is just fix all of the problem areas that are on this body. And on the back of it, there's really nothing that's like a low spot uh, that's too bad. The scratches, now that creates a low spot. So what I'm doing is I'm building up those scratches with paint a little bit at a time as the paint dries. I'll go over and fill it in again, and that will start to bring me up to the layer of clear coat. So then when I go ahead and sand this again, uh, the final sanding, you won't even see that there was a divot where the scratches are. The sides are pretty good or not too bad other than this little spot over here. Now. Another YouTuber who is also a well-known uh, guitar builder, he doesn't do refinishing, he doesn't do um, fixing of guitars and stuff, he's basically a builder. He ended up mentioning about using uh, any type of air tools or power tools uh, for sanding on a body of a guitar. All right, Now, one of the things that he was talking about, now I've done a lot of body work sanding uh, not so much of painting, but polishing, sanding, and everything else on vehicles. And one of the things that I've learned with, and a lot of stuff that we do is wet sanding, even with a uh, using a DA for doing wet sanding or a palm, an air palm sander. And usually we'd use those for doing polishing, you hold it nice and flat. Those don't cause this problem, but when you do any type of dry sanding, uh, he said something that you're not using the tool properly when you're uh, dry sanding on a body of a guitar, okay? And he was saying you'd see these little little swirly marks, all right? Uh, that's not improper use of the tool that you're using. That is a buildup on the bottom of the pad of the sandpaper that... Uh, uh, is causing those little swirls and yes you will see them in the final outcome if you end up putting a clear coat or something on they do show up <coughs> but that's not what the problem is it's not that you're using the tool improper it's that you are getting a build up 
of whatever uh, you're sanding, the material is building up as a powder form on the grit or the sandpaper, and it's causing these little swirls because this oscillates really fast back and forth, almost in a rotation motion, all right? And it does the same thing. And what causes this is this build up right over here. What happens is it starts leaving little swirls. It does scratch, it will scratch, and it will uh, put an indentation in the finish because that's a build up and it doesn't go away. So what I end up doing is with the uh, tool running is I'll rub it on some type of a cloth and usually it breaks that up and removes that, removes that build up, hit it again, and you won't, it'll get rid of all those swirl marks. The higher grit of paper that you use, the uh, more of a swirl that you're going to see, a little small swirl in your finish because of the fact that, well, it's a higher grit sandpaper, it's cutting a lot quicker, cutting a lot faster, and what it's cutting is a lot bigger uh, dust particles than when you use a finer grit. Finer grit, you kind of have a little bit more control of it. So yeah, it's not that you're using your tools wrong, it's that your pad is getting, or whatever you're using for sanding, is getting a little bit of build up on. Now if you had, were doing block sanding as well, dry sanding instead of doing wet sanding, um, same thing happens. You get a build up on that paper in whatever direction you're going with the sandpaper, if you don't clean the paper itself, uh, you will see lines going back and forth, not only just the scratch lines from the paper, but you will also see bigger lines from the build up that's on the paper itself. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still kind of getting over this COVID bullshit. I got, basically all the symptoms and everything are gone as far as uh, being sick and being contagious or anything. That's gone. And uh, just have like a little bit of remnants, kind of like a little bit of a, a sinus issue, which is getting better. But, uh, you know, cough kind of lingers a little bit. And there's a few other things that linger a little bit as well. So what I got going on over here is just trying to get all of the imperfections that are on this thing out. So when I go and sand this, right now there's the paint has shrunk, it's dried and it's shrunk into the crack. So if I go ahead and sand this now. <laughs> And I don't mean a crack in the body itself, I'm talking about a crack in the finish. See, now it's almost disappeared. You can almost not see it. Like I see a little bit over here. And right here, it's kind of disappeared quite a bit. And what I need to do now is just keep on building that up. And as you can tell with the color of black paint that I'm using, it works out perfect on this body. And it's going to hide any imperfections. I'm going to put a epoxy finish on the back of this too. And what it's going to give me is the same results that I have on the front. Then I'll do my wet sanding and buffing afterwards. Right now I have the headstock. Um, what I decided to do with the headstock is I sanded the logo off. Now I'm not putting my own logo on the headstock, like I said a long time ago. Um, if it's a brand name guitar, I'm not going to put my logo on top of their logo. I will put my logo someplace on the back of the guitar or inside the control cavity if I worked on it, but I'm not going to replace what's on the headstock. Same thing goes with this thing here. I'm not going to replace what's on the headstock, but the headstock is going to match the body uh, on this guitar. I kind of was taking a look at it and I was thinking about cutting it, and turning it into a Wolfgang, but the headstock shape is close but the top of it, how they rounded it off, you can't really get that same uh, fork or flame or whatever that is on the top of the headstock. So right now, uh, I'm going to go and finish this up and start filling in these cracks a little bit more, these scratches, deep scratches, to uh, build them up to level of the clear. All right, so I got the first coat of epoxy resin, it's sque um, not squeegeed, but troweled out really, really thin. And it also has a little bit of a blue tint to it, as you can see on the tin foil, and some when it bends into light a little bit. Now, what do I do about the holes 
that are drilled in the body for, say, you know, the screws for the neck to mount the neck to it. Well, I have this little foam rubber pad stuff that, uh, you know, it comes with pickups. It comes with, you know, just, I don't know, a bunch of, bunch of stuff it comes with. And some of this foam rubber stuff that I get is not a typical foam like sponge. It's kind of like a solid heavy set. I cut pieces off of it and I stuff it into the top of the hole. And what that does is basically blocks the top so it doesn't go down the hole. And that way on the other side I have perfectly clean holes that I could drill through to the other side of the guitar without having any problems. Now I have a piece of it also right there where the output jack is. That's going to help out as far as you know, not getting any epoxy resin into the uh, control cavity and kind of make a nice finish on the outside of the uh, uh, the body where the output jack is. If you ever try to, I don't know, pour water over uh, something that has a hole in it, you'll see that the water kind of goes around the hole and doesn't like layer the bottom or, or the bottom of the hole very well it kind of wants to fill or go inside the hole now what that uh, what this foam rubber does is when it pours over a, uh, not really a solid material but when it pours over it it kind of gives an even coat on the bottom over here too so that is going to work out perfect without having a really a pain in the ass to sand so yeah she looks good all of the whatever imperfections that were in the black that I sanded to clear down and then fixed with the paint marker, you're not going to notice it or see it like this whole area over here had uh, like the finish was rubbed off. You can't even tell now. Now, what's going to be cool about this too is say in the sunlight. This is going to have a really dark bluish tint to it in the sunlight with the uh, this dark epoxy blue dye that I put on there. So it's going to not flip flop, but it's just going to have some. It's going to look like it's blue, then it's going to look like it's black. It's going to look like it's blue. So yeah, it's going to have a little bit of a, uh, a light effect on it. Now, when I do the next thin coat of epoxy resin on top of this. Um, it's just going to be clear epoxy. So yeah, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. This thing should come out really, really nice when it's done. And all, all areas are covered. I mean, it just, yeah, it's going to be like a brand new guitar.